welcome back to the service park. This is the midday service here in Umeå in Sweden. And that is Oit Tanak heading out for not such a fruitful day, I'd say, of action. But it's points tomorrow that he'll be keeping his eye out for. So as Oit Tanak heads out, it is four stages that he'll tackle as first on the road under his restart. But then... The next will be Cali Rodham Pera to leave, as he has a fairly similar situation. Not such a fruitful points gain today, doing the usual fist bumps. Chenny joining me here in the service. We'll see you guys in a sec. We'll just keep our eyes on Cali Rodham Pera, but his usual routine, irrespective of the points haul for today. Yeah, look, get in the car, drive it, as, we, as you said, Kiri. For, for both Oit Tanak and Kelly Rovan Perra, it's just a matter of getting through the day, isn't it? And, um, and it, But it is all go again tomorrow, so that's a reason for us to to, to keep our eye on them. And uh, I, I really think particularly Oit Tanak tomorrow is going to be going hell for leather this afternoon. Keep the car straight. Don't give the mechanics and engineers any work to do this <laughs> no evening. No headaches, please. Exactly. And then, uh, and then go hard tomorrow. Well, Oitanaka taking the first stage in the morning, Caleb Rodhapair the second, Adrian Formo taking the third. We'll talk about that in a bit, but the point is, Calais and Oit just saying, yeah, I might not be in the points right now. We might have made a bit of a mistake, but we, we can still do this, by the way, just in case you're wondering. Uh, look, yeah, there's no question. The pace is there, isn't it? You know, um, <laughs> these guys are quick. I think the stage is working. restart rules today how would you say you've performed across the loop this morning um, quite okay I would say not really pushing so much it's always a bit difficult to find the feeling for the last push when you don't actually have anything to drive for uh, but yeah then after the first stage I got a bit better feeling and try, just tried to enjoy the driving it seems to be better conditions out there today and the fact that it isn't snowing it's not complete white out but on that first stage this morning, how was visibility and actually seeing where the corners were? Uh, it, it was a bit tricky in the morning, still a bit uh, not dark, but uh, on the edge and also sun was not still out. So always a bit tricky. Uh, also a lot of fresh snow after the, the snow blow had, had been there. So the corners were a bit tighter sometimes and a bit different so definitely not so easy in the morning well at least you're not a snow plow out there today like the guys were first on the road but there was a little bit of a moment at the end of the the third stage with a snowbank yeah just uh it looked worse i think on, on the camera we just went uh, on the outside of the corner and uh scooped up some snow but nothing too dramatic there we knew it wasn't too bad because yone was laughing yeah <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's always a good indicator. Second pass through, though, could be a bit more difficult this afternoon. How do you feel it's going to be out there, second pass? Um, let's see. Uh, the road base was already having some ruts now, just after a few cars, so I think it can be quite tricky, especially now when we are quite first on the road after all it only. So can be a lot of lines again, which are not clean um, and a bit mess. So let's see, but can be tricky. And focus for you now, points tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we can try to do our best and, and try to help the, the team bring some points, and that's the goal. Again, focus on the second pass. Those stages that we saw this morning are the afternoon leaps, loops, so they will be coming churned up out there. It will be coming more difficult out there. Yeah, the, you, you know, Cali said it, that, that it's going to be more difficult this afternoon, a very different landscape, but it was yesterday, you know, and, it, and it's something that we see every time we go winter rallying. Um, the first the first loop and the second loop are, 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 are different. You can't re rely on them being the same. There's been so many different classes of cars come through there. We've had, obviously, Rally 1, Rally 2, the juniors, and then the historics. It just churns it up, and it makes it a, a completely different landscape again. And Cali Rovampera has a job to do tomorrow, doesn't he, Kiri? He's got to he's got to spoil Oitanak's party. You know, Cali's not in the championship fight. Oitanak is, so Cali's got to go and, uh, and stop stop Oitanak taking those seven points and the power stage. Yeah, indeed. We'll start talking points in a minute just to give you a complete update. Now, that uh, was Thierry's car from uh, earlier on. 
we are behind Elvin Evans, who will be leaving us well in just a moment. But uh, Gregor Munster is uh, the next of our cars heading out out of our service park here in Umeå and back onto those stages. Now, if you're wondering about Gregor's progress throughout the weekend, obviously massively hampered by the over four minutes that he picked up with that function yesterday. But again, the M Sport boys putting in, we'll talk about Adrian Formo in a bit, but a good stint all round, really. Yes, this is a learning weekend. He is Gregor Munster, for one of a better phrase, is at school. And, but he has had, and I know it's been difficult for him, but when he gets home and when he reflects on it, like you said yesterday, when he gets home and reflects on how difficult this weekend will be, he'll appreciate every moment because he, yesterday he had incredibly difficult conditions to deal with. Today, perhaps slightly more consistent. Certainly this morning in the, in the, in the morning loop on the fast stages, he was able to, to activate the tyre to use it. And, and yeah, I think Greg was, he's just slowly getting experience. That's his job. Yeah, indeed, that is exactly what he's here to do. Well, welcome along if you have just joined us. This is the midway point of Saturday. We are in the service park. Service is almost complete now, but beforehand, it was the media zone with Bex Williams, and she spoke with Gregor Munster. Greg, well, what a difference today is in terms of the conditions. No falling snow. You can actually see where you're going out there today. Has it been a better morning? Yeah, it's been uh, much better than yesterday, much more enjoyable. Also, for my learning, uh, I think we are much closer to normal conditions you can have in Sweden. And, uh, and so it's very, very nice to try and test a bit the, the speed you can have through, through the corner, use the snowbank, but not too much. And so, yeah, having a great day. You really loved that middle stage. Yeah. This morning, didn't you? You were very energetic at the end of it to say how, how good it was out there. What was it about the stage that you liked so much? It's just so fast. It's quite wide. Um, a bit like uh, you can have with Finland some, uh, sometimes on gravel, but then on snow. And uh, the feeling you can have on such stage with a, with a car on snow is just amazing. Uh, pushing really to the limit, using all of the road. Uh, getting into corners with 150 kilometers per hour of stuff it's just yeah so enjoyable <laughs> how was the car feeling this morning and what kind of changes would you do now for a second pass bearing in mind that the road is going to have changed it might be a little bit more rutted this afternoon yeah indeed it's going to be a bit uh, more rough uh, but for me it's all about the the learning of the of the car and and my driving uh, we don't want to to get too far off with uh, with settings and stuff so we keep it simple we'll uh, raise the car a bit like you said for the the rutted set Section and maybe change a bit uh, clicks from the, the comments I have from the, the first pass, but uh, that, that will be it. Thank you. Just talking about the, the minor changes to the setup and things like that that they'll be doing with Gregoire. Like you were saying, sort of just, just a learning curve, but talk us through the potentials of a service here. What could happen? Well, the first thing that the, the team will do is come and just give the car a good dose of look and make sure that everything's OK, nothing's bent. All By the way, I should stuff. explain, we are just in the corner here because we, we didn't just choose the worst location ever. Elvin should be leaving in just a matter of moments. So that's why we're just lurking in the corner here out the way. Um, yeah, but just coming back to what I was saying about the um, about service, the, the, the mechanics will give the cars a good a good check, make sure everything's okay. They'll speak to the drivers and uh, and get any feedback, any potential changes that they might want to make. Uh, and then it's and then it's really as Greg was 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 saying there, it's adjustments for this afternoon stage. We know that the stage is a bit more rutted, so you run a slightly higher ride height. Um, uh, you've got to be very careful that you don't get hybrid, that you don't shock the hybrid pack because if you go over a big jump and the car lands on its on on its sump guard. On its belly it can it can it can shock the hybrid system and put it into safety and then you lose the hybrid boost so raising the car up a little bit to, to suit the stages because we know there will be more ruts this afternoon yeah indeed more ruts eyes just with Thierry Nouveau now now because it's a flexi service if you're wondering what's going on once the service is done they put the ropes or if there's a more technical word for that we'll find it but the ropes around the car until it's their time to leave but because it's a flexi service that service can be done at any point in the allotted flexi service time yeah they just put the they they, they, they batten the car off basically you're not allowed to touch it within the in the time but uh, You've got a window of opportunity to, to, to work on the car, and when you choose to use that window is, is up to you. And once the car is serviced, they then close it off again, and nobody can touch it. And it's it's as simple as that. So that's um, yeah, that's why they've got the the ropes around them. Okay, well, this is now Thierry heading out onto the stage. What's Thierry's job this afternoon? Because, of course, he had those problems yesterday, which have led him to be in the position that he's in right now. But what's his job? What's he working towards? 
uh, get himself into the top five. I think is 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 his and job. Now. Sunday points. It's all about yeah, Sunday yeah. points. I mean, he, he had a he had a very difficult day yesterday. He came into this morning in eleventh place, and he's been picking off those WRC two runners that were ahead of him. But for Thierry, he's just got to get himself up into the top five, kick off as as bank as many points as he can do this evening uh, for the for the Friday Saturday championship point fight, and then tomorrow, go again. Go again. Always go again. All right. Well, Malcolm Wilson now with Bex Williams. <clears throat> Malcolm, happy birthday. Oh, thank you very much. Many happy returns. I'll, I'll sing to you if you really want me yes, to. Yes, I need you to sing to me. Happy birthday to you. Wow. <laughs> What a nice way to spend your birthday. Rally Sweden, <coughs> and you were telling me the other night that it's the 28th consecutive year that you've been coming here? It is. It's the 28th consecutive year as team manager, team principal, whichever way you want to look at it. And then uh, I think as a competitor, I think I did it six or seven times as well. So 35 years to Swedish rally. Incredible. And one of your drivers, well, both of your drivers are doing well out there, but one is in podium position right now. That's Adrian Formo. He's just had a stage win. <coughs> Doing an incredible job out there. And well, he's just given me the perfect birthday present because, uh, yeah, you know, I have to say, before we came here, it's the last thing I was expecting was Adrian to be in a position to do that. Uh, okay, he's in a big battle, but obviously Elvin's pushing as well. He made a small mistake the end, towards the end. So, um, no, I mean, I've just seen him now, and uh, as I say, we, we, I honestly felt before the event, if we could have got in the top five, we would have been very happy, but. There's no, there's no question. If he doesn't have any issues, then um, he can, you know, he can achieve a podium. It's turning into a, a classic Swedish <coughs> rally out there, isn't it? We're seeing some brilliant pace from the drivers, but also it's so easy to make a mistake out there, Malcolm. As you know from competing here in the past, yeah. one wheel into a snow <coughs> bank and you could be a goner out there. Yeah, but it's incredible to see today. I mean, compared to yesterday, it was really difficult. But uh, I mean, you know, you can see it's fantastic for the, the drivers having so much fun there this morning. So, um, yeah, let's just hope for much of the same this afternoon. Yeah, we're looking forward to that. What have you thought of Greg Wallmonster's performance as well? You know, it's the big step up to Rally 1 for the whole season for him this <laughs> year. And, OK, there was a small mistake in Monte Carlo, but he's been a mature drive so far. Yeah, I think, you know, again, he had a difficult day yesterday, but I'm really pleased with the way that he's, I think, how could I describe it? Basically got hold of the car this morning. Um, and in, in fairness, he's had no hybrid for the last two stages, took a big impact on the first stage. So his, his times, considering that as well, have been, uh, been really, really encouraging. Mm. Well, have a lovely rest of your birthday. I hope it goes well podium-wise. <laughs> Thank you very much. Happy birthday to <laughs> you, <laughs> old man. Happy birthday to well, you. He can sing as well. <laughs> if I'm still there at that age, I'm not sure. Uh, no. <laughs> well, I'm crazy. Yeah, yeah, you are. You are. Now it's my time. <laughs> You've got quite a nice baritone voice going on there. Yeah, yeah, you. Uh... Impressed. Thierry, talk to me about your morning out there because. You have elevated yourself up the leaderboard. Of course, it was occupied by a lot of WRC2 drivers. How are you feeling about this morning, though? Because it sounds like you're quite frustrated. You've not quite got the car set up to the way you like. Yeah, I mean, it's it's not a secret. I mean, shakedown for us was basically a mess. Uh, intercom issues on the first pass, the bonnet open on the, on the last pass. So all the settings we want to try, I couldn't confirm. And I came back to my uh, pre-event test setup, which wasn't really great either. And yesterday was nothing we could do in the in the terrific conditions mm -hmm. to really find anything uh, good uh, to prepare today. Uh, obviously, quite different conditions today, and I'm just not feeling uh, comfortable. And and I feel like the car is not fast enough. Well, I'm sure any, every driver will come in here and tell me that as well. Second pass could be quite tricky. Maybe not as tricky as yesterday with the, the heavy falling snow, but certainly that third stage, the, the back end of that stage, looked really bumpy already yeah. without a second pass. No, I mean, second pass is always tricky. I mean, you, you always want to go faster than on the first pass, but some of the corner, they might be even more tricky. The snow banks could be gone. There could be also a lot of snow on the road. So it's always a bit of a challenge to find the right balance between going faster than the first pass without overdriving and uh, yeah getting stuck in a snowbank I mean we saw this morning again obviously Taka got uh, uh, catched by a snowbank um, very small mistake with huge consequences and that's what we need to avoid this afternoon yeah it's so easy to do out there you obviously had a problem yesterday 
which I think we talked about at length with you, but there's been no re-emergence of that problem. Was it resolved in service last night? Yeah, so what it, was actually, it? It, it is resolved, but uh, the message was that uh, it could still appear again. Um, and then uh, I know what to do. So like yesterday, we got ca the, the car going um, and we were able to finish the loop. Um, and uh, if it appears again, it should be the same uh, like yesterday. But you don't need to improve your road position now, though. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm joking. Uh, how far do you think you can pu push yourself up the leaderboard? Uh, P4. Um, still, fingers crossed that we end up P3 tonight, but <laughs> I would say that chances are only for P4. Well, Jenny, you said a top five. He's looking for a top three. We'll see if he can pull that up after four stages. Adrian Formo giving Malcolm Wilson the best birthday gift he could hope for. Indeed, at the moment, sitting in second. He needs to not put a foot wrong out there. Esapeka Lappi has a decent lead now, so there is no need to challenge that. But what he's got to ward off is Elvin Evans behind him. Yeah, Elvin uh, started really well, didn't he? Got that gap down to 11 seconds and then obviously had that issue on the final stage of the loop um, uh, and dropped that and, dro and was actually up on Adrian Formo again to close the gap, but then dropped that time. So I think it's back up to about 16 seconds now. Um, Elvin's got a job to do. We saw him just leaving a moment ago and uh, and he's got to go out and, and, and keep it between the snowbanks, keep it clean and, and try and get ahead of Adrian Formo. Um, at the same time, that's a, a young Frenchman who is uh, on for his first podium. Uh, and, with and, a, a very wise Malcolm behind him now, giving yeah, him man, advice. A man he doesn't want to upset, I'll put it that way. Don't but like, make uh, a mistake. <laughs> you know what, listen, he's, he's wise enough himself. He may be young, but he's not silly. <laughs> no, he's not daft. He's not daft. But at the same time, when the pace is there, when you feel good in the car, you just drive the stage to what you feel and the time comes. And, uh, you know, I don't think Adrian's driving out of his capabilities. I don't think he's overdriving the car. He's just naturally feels good in the car and, and the time is there. But Elvin will be fired up this afternoon, so I promise few, you that. There's quite a few things going on here. Esa Pakalapi is after that uh, illustrious win that has been it's sort of getting away from him for quite a while now. He wants another one of those. Then we've got the battle between Thierry and Elvin. We're talking championship battle there. Those are the points that we're looking at for championship battle. Adrian Formo sort of in his own little world there. He wants his first podium. I'm not sure he was expecting it to be a second, but, you know, he's coming off the back of a great Monte Carlo into here. He wants his first podium in a WRC car. And then, you know, then we've got to all the different battles in WRC too. So the afternoon is very much about watching the whole field. There is something going on with every single driver out there. Yeah, quite so. And I think just coming back to Esa Pekka Lappi, uh, you know, you mentioned it had been a while. It's been, I think it's been over six years now since well, he took uh, that yeah. first win. And, we and were trying to do the maths, weren't we? It is about, I think it's, it's a duration, at least, at least over six. Yeah, yeah, it's over six years. And I think it's heading on for six and a half years, whatever. But it, it, his job now is more, it's more difficult than it is when you're in a fight with somebody because now it's when the thoughts start trying to get into your head and you realise you don't need to take risks, but then you end up making a silly mistake. We've seen it so many times before. This is... Trust me, mentally, this is a difficult drive for Esa Pekka Lappi over the next couple of days. Well, I think he even said it at one of the stage ends. You know, it's harder when you've got a decent gap because then you know that you sort of come off the pace a bit. You want to hold your position rather than pushing and fighting. Your mentally, your brain, like you said, is just sort of rolling around there thinking, don't make a mistake. All right, our eyes are with our rally leader. That's our rally Sweden leader of Esa Pekka Lappi. It's well over a minute lead that he's got over Adrian Formo at the moment. So at this point, let's find out how he's feeling as we head into the afternoon loop. Esa Pekka, you're a rally leader here in Sweden, and it, it's a heck of a lead now, over a minute, minute 24, I think, heading into the afternoon stages. Talk to me about mindset when you have that amount of time, how it changes your approach to the stages, and does it make you feel a bit more on edge than when it's a less amount of time? Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it feels a bit more challenging. Um, because first of all, you know what, it, what we are dealing with, let's say. I need to finish, I need to bring the, the points um, and for sure I would still like to win as well and the gap is, uh, gap is big and I, sh I don't need to really push but then on the other hand you know it's easy to lose the rhythm as well if you don't, don't push at all so yeah it's about skills to be efficient I mean I'm trying to stay away from the banks as you never know what is inside of them. It can break the car and second thing, they can also catch you like what, what happened unfortunately to Taka. So, and because of that, we are losing a little bit of time, but, but we can afford that now. 
Yeah, exactly. That's the good side of it, isn't it? You can afford to lose a little bit of time and be more careful. It is difficult not to touch the banks out there. They're, they're big banks. They're everywhere. And it seems that everyone is, is getting a little nibble in. That's putting more snow on the road and making it tougher for the guys behind. Yeah, yeah, for sure. There was, especially the last section of the long stage was really messy in, in the end. And yeah, there is no line, no line at all. And even I was really slow over there. I was also going a bit too wide in, in a couple of places because you just cannot control. It's too much snow and the, the tire doesn't really bite anywhere. So, yeah. Quite funny. <laughs> Plan for this afternoon, does anything change from your approach or is it still just keep away from the snow banks and keep as precise as possible? No, similar, yeah, very similar than in the in the morning. I mean very safe driving, try to try to be efficient. You need to smile, you're leading the rally. Yeah, but I also need to concentrate. <laughs> Ooh, it's a stern fin this afternoon. Good luck. Thanks. Well, yeah, Asafa Kalafi is leading the rally, but Oliver Solberg also leading WRC2, an incredible stint and an incredible host of fans as well here, as well as dad, of course, down here with Oliver Solberg. So that is the WRC2. We also two. just need to say, can you just swing the camera around that way? It's Mama Mom's Solberg's birthday, birthday yesterday. Well, Happy yes. birthday. It's everyone's birthday. <laughs> we don't know what that is. <laughs> If it's, a, if it's a pastry, we won't say no. <laughs> Norwegian hot dog coming up. Oh, it's a hot dog. Oh, you can eat the hot dog, Jen. I thought it was a pastry. I was well in for a pastry. OK, well, we are in the Solberg camp right now. Of course, Petter was just there. How you doing? I'm, I'm OK. You're looking very clean-shaven. Have you had a haircut? That was two questions in one, yeah. <laughs> I had taken a haircut and I had taken shave yesterday, yeah. Oh, birthday, OK. Yeah. It was for the birthday celebration. Yeah, exactly. Right. Lovely. Yeah. OK, thank, thank you. Know. We have invited uh, Italians in okay. for a uh, Norwegian sausage. The prince got the sausage and <laughs> ketchup and uh, mustard. <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, like home rally for Oliver. So we're trying to have a lot of friends and family and VIPs. Okay. Yeah. And you've had all the VIPs. I saw the prince down here. It's been very special for you guys. And to be honest, you've got the whole fans behind you as well. Yeah, Oliver, I mean... After a fantastic day yesterday, and okay, it's a long way to go. I think it's good for Sweden and for him, uh, with all the kids around and people to enjoy this moment. And you know, this is entertainment we are doing, and we have to take care of people the best we can. And we have also Anja Persson, the, you know, the Olympic world champion with us, and we took them out on the stages now. So, oh, you did? Okay. yeah, so it's yeah, a great, uh, great atmosphere. All right, well, I, we came for Oliver and we got a sausage, so there we go. <laughs> there we it's go. It's very, very good. All right, yeah. all right. It's, you it's, it's gone already. Come, come on. The, no, the difference is, on the sausage, when you have one bite, it's gonna you're going to hear it. Then it's a good sausage. You know, try. It was a good sausage. OK, OK, excellent. I, I, sometimes I Get wonder where India. we go. Stop sometimes I wonder Lovely. where we go. All right, uh, Oliver Solberg. Sausages to Oliver. Let's go. Good afternoon, Mr. Solberg. Continuing to lead WRC2. How are you feeling after the three stages this morning? Yeah, feeling good. Uh, we are, have extended the lead, uh, so uh, I'm very happy. And it's been a good and clean morning. I tell you what, you've got a hell of a battle behind you right now. You've built up this nice lead, as you said, but they're all battling. Are you keeping an eye on their times behind or not? Uh, no, not really. I let them have their fight and then I do my best and uh, we'll see how it goes. Tell me how the car was feeling out there this morning on these stages, because we've got different conditions today. Yeah. The sun's come out, there's no falling snow finally. What was it like? It helps, <laughs> definitely. But it doesn't help my fight for keeping third place overall. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's, it's, it's very nice conditions today. Absolutely fantastic. It is good, and it's fantastic to see the cars at real pace out yes. there today yeah. as well. We talked about limits with other drivers yesterday, and it was really hard to say, are you on your limit? Because everyone had a bit of hesitancy. Yes. Are you more flat out today now? Yeah, no, I, I've just tried to keep the same rhythm as I've had the whole weekend. And uh, as I said, the feeling in the car is 90%. Then I have to keep my driving at 90%, because otherwise there is risk involved. So I'm just trying to keep it nice and clean. Keep it up, Oliver. Thank you Thank very you. much. <laughs> Well, there we go. We definitely got a family greeting it down at the Solberg camp. Uh, now we've got Lindemar, Georg Lindemar leaving as well. Oh, he had a bit of a, a bit of a moment in the last stage, which sort of took him out of that battle. Not completely out of the fight, but out of the battle, I'd say. 
Yes, uh, no, certainly not out of the fight. We've got a brilliant battle on our hands for, for second place in, in the WRC two field, haven't we? It's Oliver's kind of in a bit of a league of his own at the moment. And as he just said, we heard him saying he's driving at 90%. He's driving intelligently. This is his rally and to win, but he's got to be very careful he doesn't lose where it. That's Pekka will be as well. Those two are in a very... Uh, you know, it's not ominous, but it's one of those, it's just on the edge, isn't it? You, you've got to just make sure you don't mess anything up now. Yeah, yeah, we've just got to be careful you don't make mistakes. Sammy Pyre just heading out onto the stages. That man right there in the fight for second, right in the fight for second. So, yeah, look, again, conditions more difficult. Those four young men who are in that fight for second place, they can't lift off. They, they've got a job to do this afternoon. They're going to have to go flat out. Oliver Solberg, drive smart. It's going to be an amazing afternoon, but how did Georg find his morning? Let's find out. Georg, the battle in WRC2 right now is really quite fierce. You had a bit of drama, though, on the third stage of the loop this morning. Talk me through that. Yeah, basically, we were uh, in for a good time, but uh, unfortunately, on the last K or so, we had a spin into the, uh, uh, into the bank and the car wouldn't go in reverse, so... It should have been maybe, you know, two or three seconds and ended up being 20, unfortunately. But, uh, you know, it is what it is. We've put ourselves in a difficult situation now, but uh, we'll try to fight back for sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be a huge fight back because your pace has been really strong here so far in Sweden. Yeah, it's been going well. The car is working nicely. So, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully uh, you know, the others don't improve their pace too much uh, for the second loop and we can maybe attack a bit. Yeah, second loop is, as ever, though, going to be difficult out there, isn't it? What do you do now to make changes to the car to prepare for that this afternoon? I don't think we'll make massive changes, if I'm honest. The uh, car is feeling quite OK now, and I don't expect the stages to be as different as they were uh, afternoon loop yesterday. So I think the car will work quite well. We actually went with the setup we used uh, last afternoon, so it was working quite OK in the morning also. We'll just keep that one, I think. Well, what can he do this afternoon? That is the question. Eyes will be on the WRC2 battle as much as this big battle that is building in the WRC. OK, Adrian Formo, he really is edge of the seat stuff at M Sport because, you know, they set their, their camp out this year and they thought, you know, top fives are sort of where they're going to be aiming throughout the season. A podium would be just amazing. Perhaps didn't think that it might be an opportunity on round two. Yeah, and look... But let's, let's be honest, there's no question that, that what happened yesterday to, to Oit Tanak and Kalirov and Perez played into their hands. Road position for Thierry Neville and Elvin Evans has played keep into it on their the road hands. While but, others make mistakes. Well, yeah, but the pace has been there. They have done a brilliant job. Adrian Formo has driven so intelligently, and we talk about it in commentary about how you come on as a driver. Adrian Formo has absolutely come on as a driver and, and he's leading that team uh, and he has stepped up into that role and I think, you know, I was chatting to Malcolm before he came out and he said, I'm not putting any pressure on the lads, they just get in the car and drive it. And when you don't have that mental pressure, nice the results come, absolutely. So, listen, he's got, he's got to dig deep this afternoon. If he can keep Elvin Evans behind him and bag those Saturday championship points, then that is a, uh, a hell of a drive for Adrian Formo. Shall we find out how he's feeling? Absolutely. Adrian, we've just interviewed your team boss, Malcolm Wilson, and he said the best birthday present he could have got was your faster stage time out there today. Well done on that. It's been a good morning. Yeah, it's been a good morning. A bit tricky to find the pace in the first stage, but after it went really good. So, so really pleased with our pace this morning. We keep the second position, so it's really, really positive. Uh, I didn't expect to be at that uh, position at uh, the start of the rally, so, so it's quite good. Uh, we show a really good pace on snow uh, for my fourth rally on snow, so it's quite, it's really, really interesting. Yeah, I mean, when you look at it, like you mentioned, it's only the fourth rally on snow. You don't have a huge amount of experience here, yet you are holding your own out there. You're still holding on to second position. Elvin, I'm sure, will come strongly this afternoon, but how are you feeling mentally? Because you are looking at your first ever WRC podium here. Are you thinking about that at the moment or not? Well, for sure, to be P2 or P3 for me, it's the most important is to get the podium. Uh, I don't think it will change a lot if you are second or third, but we need to get this podium. So, so I want to keep the, to keep the car on the road uh, without any issue, without any trouble. That's the main thing. I think it was pushing this morning and uh, on the stage two and three, we were faster. So, so to be fair, we will see if we can keep in uh, behind. But if not, it's OK. And I'm going to ask you if the car was feeling good this morning, but I'm assuming yes, because obviously you posted the fastest well, stage. Well, not, not in the first, uh, first stage, but then we have changed a little bit after. It was much better. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Now, something we didn't mention just before that Bex was picked up on there. So it was Oit stage win, Calais stage win, Adrian Formo stage win. 
Yeah, as I he's said, dry... his place out there. Yeah, he's he's doing a fantastic job. And listen, where they're all natural competitors, uh, it just goes to show his maturity when you hear a young man who is chasing his first podium say, "Listen, if it's second, it's second. If it's third, it's third. It doesn't really matter to, to me. The result this weekend is the most important thing. What he needs to do this afternoon is just keep it between the snowbanks, not throw it off, not have any accidents. If he finishes third this weekend, yes. then I guarantee to you at the start of the weekend, if someone comes to him and gone, you're going to finish third, <laughs> yeah. it'll rip their arm off. Come Absolutely. Through. So, listen, if it's second or third, then that's a brilliant result for them. Somebody who does want guaranteed podiums at each round is Elvin Evans. So how's he feeling as he goes into the afternoon of chasing? Elvin, it's the big battle out there for that second position this morning. Let's talk about the third stage, though, because it was looking really, really good on all the splits until the final one. You lost a bit of time. What happened there? Yeah, I just uh, scooped a bit of snow on a, on a junction, um, went in the airbox and, uh, and yeah, I had no power uh, from, from that moment and it didn't improve, unfortunately, throughout the stage. So, yeah, bit of a clumsy, clumsy error and paid a big price for it. The thing is, there's a lot of snow around in these snowbanks. It's easy to catch them out, as we've seen with many of the drivers. In general, though, how have you found the morning? Uh, otherwise, it's been OK. The feeling's been, been fine. Uh, I wouldn't say it's amazing, but, uh, you know, seemed to be performing at an OK level at least, and uh, we'll see if we can keep that up this afternoon. It is going to be a big afternoon because second pass, as we historically know in Sweden, is always difficult. How difficult do you feel it's going to be, though, after you know the sense that you've got of the stages this morning and the condition they're in? We always expect quite a bit of gravel to come through, and we know that the, the tyre wear comes with that. So, uh, yeah, it's about finding the balance between pushing enough and, and obviously looking after those tyres the best we can, and it's never an easy balance to find. Good luck this afternoon. Thank you. Oh, there's plenty of work for Elvin Evans to do this afternoon. He is playing the long game, irrespective of here, irrespective of for what he wants in terms of a position. He's playing the long game in terms of the points haul. So it's what he can bag tonight and what he can get out of tomorrow. But then when he gets to tomorrow, he's looking at battling off Oit for that points haul as well. Yeah, I think tomorrow will be. He'll be worrying about tomorrow. Tomorrow, right now, he's got. To, he's got to try and get himself ahead of Adrian Formo for those 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 extra championship points. He is fighting for for a world championship. Adrian Formo, with the greatest respect to him, uh, isn't. Now, of course, every championship point is important. Uh, um, but but Elvin Evans certainly doesn't want to drop any. So he's got to try and get ahead of get ahead of Adrian tomorrow. Well, that's going to just be an absolute <laughs> super sprint between so many drivers, and I you know can't what? wait. But name Super Sunday pretty early on in Monty, and it's certainly going to be another Super Sunday tomorrow. All right, well, if you have just joined us for the first time, you're thinking, well, what happened to the battle with Esa Pekalapi and Taka? Was such misfortune faced Taka this morning? So much disappointment for him. Massively, and uh, you know, uh, Takamoto was 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 really really upset. We can just see here he's just so into this right hander. He just loses the back of the car, and he just sucks it in, turns it around, and and three quarters of the car is is in the snow. It's as simple as that, and you're not getting it out. Aaron, I mean, he was well buried. Aaron couldn't get out of the car. He had to to um, oh, to come out through Taka. But look, as soon as the back of the car is on that loose snow, you've got no grip at all. Then it hits the snowbank, and it just pulls the front of the car right in. And, uh, and that was that moment. And it was such a shame because, listen, we, we've wanted to see Takamoto Katsuta taking that first win. There's been so much magic that happens in Sweden, hasn't there, over the years, and it would have been magical for him to take his first victory here. But sadly, not to be this weekend. And it meant so much to Taka as well. He went to the media zone and was speaking to Bex Williams, and you can just see how much this all meant for him. Taka, it was an incredible fight that we were watching between yourself and Esa Pekka Lappi, the fight for the lead, but unfortunately that ended on the middle stage of the loop today. Talk us through what happened. Um, yeah, obviously I wanted to push today um, after a very tough yesterday and we wanted to, of course, like continue to pushing to fighting with the EP. Um, yeah, then we did uh, quite okay time on the first one to gain the uh, gain the time and uh, much closer gap between uh, me and the EP. So I just wanted to keep co continue to pushing and even maybe even more to gain more time. But then um, obviously I was uh, trying very hard and one uh, very single corner. Uh, I carried uh, a bit a bit too much speed and then snapped the rear and after that basically hit the snowbank from the rear and then basically. We stuck in the snowbank, then we couldn't get out. It's hugely frustrating for you, I know. And the positive thing is your speed is there. <clears> we can all see that. It just needs to all kind of meld together to, to get a result. How are you feeling about 
everything that's happened this morning? Um, yeah, uh, it's hard to find the words, but uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult, I know. Yeah, it's a. Uh, Taka drives with all the heart in the world, doesn't he? Yeah, it's heartbreaking to see that, really, because, um, listen, that man has given given so much. He started his career racing karts and then moved into cars in Japan, uh, raced with Ryo Hirakawa and those kind of guys in Japan and, and, and was properly quick in circuit racing. His heart lies in rallying. He said, I want to go rallying, and he, he moved to Finland, couldn't speak a word of English. In the last four years, he has learned English. He's got an, a Northern Irish co-driver sat beside him, Aaron Johnson, another man, hunting for his first uh, rally win. And the frustrating thing for Taka won't just be what's happened this weekend. It'll be what happened at the end of 2023 in Japan. It'll be what happened in Monte Carlo, because every time he's been sat in the car, he's been quick. This was a real opportunity for but, him. I'm putting a butt. Okay. He's, quick yeah, in he's quick in Kenya. We can do it in Kenya. Yeah, Taka. yeah. We but, can but do it in Kenya. That's, 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 that's true, but he'll just be starting to I get know. frustrated with the fact that he can't convert the pace into a result. No um, such thing as car. We'll, we'll see, we'll see. All right, well, we are just by the juniors. I just wanted to give you a quick update. Fabio Schwartz, of course, had that spin, which meant that Eamon Kelly had moved up. So Eamon Kelly's still in fourth, but the gap is just a lot less. Local lad, uh, Milena Johansson, is still still out in front, which is good for the Swedes. The Swedes leading the juniors, the Swedes leading the WRC too. And uh, then you can see that it is Roman Jorgensen who is in second, breaking up the party there. So that's how the juniors are looking for now. We will keep you over all of that situation as it unfolds. Remember, they run through the stages quite a bit later, so we get all that information up. So it might be coming through the commentary. We'll, we'll give you those updates, though, I promise. Yeah, good to see Millie Johansson doing so well. And Eamon Kelly up into fourth. I don't know, I don't know where the Irish flag is, but there it is. There, it's there. floating around there. So come on, Eamon. But, um, yeah, and, and the one thing I would say as well is, you know, we, we heard uh, Gregoire Munster talking about raising the ride height of the car. That was the Rally 1 cars. You'll see the same with the, with the Rally 2s. For the little juniors, um, you know, they're going to have a really rough time in these rutted stages. We've seen before in the past cars getting ripped apart on the rut, on the rut. so there'll be lots of raising the ride height, going out and looking after the cars, so lots to look forward to in the Junior World Rally Championship this afternoon. In the meantime, listen, it's that moment you've all been waiting for, the unrivaled <laughs> event of the weekend. It's Bloor on Tour. Alamans Rettan is the ethos and the philosophy behind the Swedish way of life, and of course, snow. Well, that means that you can roam free throughout the country. So this tour is all about doing that. Welcome to Sami. This is the only area which is Sami territory. Now, these are official reindeer herders and I'm, I'm trying to feed reindeer, but I'm not sure I'm the best reindeer herder. <laughs> All right, well, to stop me roaming completely free, I do actually have a tour guide and I like the fact that she has brought me to a castle for my first trip. So thank you so much. We're going to head to a castle. Well, Anna, thank you so much for agreeing to be my tour guide and great to meet you. Now, I like the fact that you brought me to a castle, but what on earth is this place? Well, this is a playground in the city centre that we build every winter. It's absolutely incredible. Made of snow. Made of snow and very popular uh, with the sledges and the labyrinth. So uh, you can play around here for quite some fun. Should we go give the sledging a go? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> Let's do it. Oh, goodness, is this safe, Anna? Well, Anna, <laughs> I'm done with the outdoor activities. Where should we go now? Let's go inside and have some music. Well, Anna, I'm loving these staircases. So where have you brought me? I brought you to a guitar museum, the world's most famous guitar museum. And uh, I'm here to uh, let you meet some friends of mine to okay. get a vibe of who they are. Well, Anna, this looks like an Aladdin's cave of guitars. It is, it is. And I got someone for you to meet. Uh, this is Sam. Hi Sam, the owner of this place. This place is incredible. Yeah, thank you. Well Sam, this is the only guitar museum in the world, so where on earth did the inspiration for this come from? And also in Umeå of all places. Well, we just uh, grew up with the Rolling Stones and Beatles and uh, Jimi Hendrix and uh, wanted the same guitars as they had. And we realized they were never important to Europe until 1963. So we met up with two 
secret guitar dealers and bought everything from them. <laughs> And by everything, you do actually mean everything. This museum is packed. But talk to me about this, because this is sort of where it all began. This is a recreation of the shop front. Yeah, the Hawks and Music Store. And it was a meeting spot for people, touring and local musicians. And uh, these guys were hanging at the, the music store, Meshugga, and they invented eight string guitars. And uh, we sold them the floor pedal that created the sound they wanted, but actually mentioned on the back of the record, thanks to Mike and Samuel, like rock sound as our uh, store was called. Amazing. Now, not just these famous faces, you have had pretty much every famous face through the doors. Tell me a few of the people that you've had through here and some of the guitars that are associated with some of the stars. Yeah, we got uh, a meeting from uh, Patty Boyd, wife of George Harrison and Eric Clapton, and she came with her private photo collection and uh, you could land that and make an exhibition and each day we don't know how the day will be so one day uh, Metallica's producer Bob Brock showed up. We bought stuff from uh, The Who and uh, Paul McCartney from Beatles and Jeff Beck and so on. And well incredible stories at just at every part of your museum so where to now? We go around the corner and I have a special surprise for you. My twin brother Mike. <laughs> I love it you collected a brother along the yeah. way as well. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't look like much, but I think you're going to like it. This is a chocolate factory. This is Chocolate Jenny. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Now, Jenny, I'm fully equipped with my hairnet, which means I am ready for the most famous chocolate factory in Umeå. Thank you for showing us around here. So this is your chocolate factory, and this is where everything is made? Yes, it's actually made from the bean, cacao bean. And did you know that most chocolate brands, they're just remelted chocolates. I am bean to bar, so I grind these beans and I roast them and I turn it into chocolate. And this one is flavored with local blueberries. So it's all made in here. Now, Jenny, the obvious question that everybody is gonna ask in a chocolate factory is, can I try some? Yes, you can try some straight from the machinery. And this is actually stones grinding the cacao beans. And this is, uh, we use oats instead of milk. Oh, wow, yes. okay. So here you go. <laughs> You can have two spoons. <laughs> mm, my goodness, it's delicious. So Jenny, what happens in here? So there you're grinding down the beans. Yes. And then in here, you're making the bars? Yes. Okay. In, yes. Here we turn the chocolate into a chocolate bar. Maybe add some local herbs. Okay. We use herbs from around here. Amazing. And this chocolate, it's a white chocolate. It's vegan. So we use oats, Swedish oats instead of milk. Okay. Grab it. Okay. Like that. Mmm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Can you taste the oats? You really can taste yeah. the oats. It's yeah. amazing. And it doesn't yeah. taste too sweet. Exactly. Which means you can eat more of it. Yeah. Now the mold is where you're making the chocolate, making the actual bars and you do it all here. Yes. We pour the chocolate in the mold by hand and then maybe add some local herbs and then we put it in the fridge, take it out upside down and it comes out like that and then we need to wrap every bar by hand. Yes. Well that is why it's Umeå's most famous chocolate. Chocolate Jenny, thank you so much for showing around. Now thank there's you. only one thing left to do on this tour. Snow Angels! Okay, it's really cold. <laughs> That's amazing. I like Chocolate Jenny. She was like a Swedish Would you Willy like an Wonka. <laughs> and your, your hairnet was lovely. Thank lovely, you. Well, mate. on that note, perfect time to hand over to the action for the first time this afternoon. Welcome back, everyone, to Rally Sweden coverage then. Let's crack on with our stages for this afternoon. Same three as this morning, followed by the Umeå stage to round out proceedings later.